Hello, my name's Bob Willis and welcome to Defect of the Month. Every month I try and provide an example of a particular defect and hopefully some solutions. And I've made over a hundred different defect videos over the years, so hopefully one will solve one of your problems. Remember that if you like this video content, please subscribe to the channel. If you like this individual uh, video, then just like it. And of course, please share it with some of your other engineering colleagues within your company. A common process defect that we see quite often in manufacture is tombstoning of chip components. Now, here's a couple of examples. The first, I show the lifting of a component during reflow soldering that we would traditionally refer to as tombstoning. In this second example, you can see the same effect taking place, but in this particular situation, the component only partly lifts, which on some AOI inspection systems may not be spotted. Now, tombstoning predominantly is affected by the process, the design, and these are some of the reasons why you might see it in manufacture. Now, the pad size for chip components has to be right. If we've got uneven pad distribution or sometimes the pad separation distance based on the termination of the components, this can contribute to lifting. If you've got some other interconnection to one side of the passive component, again, it may significantly affect the time of reflow. And where you get reflow not happening simultaneously on each termination, this can be a contributing factor. Probably one of the biggest contributing factors to tombstoning is the volume of solder. And progressively, as we've started to use less and less solder paste in terms of thickness on the surface of smaller and smaller parts and boards, we've generally seen less tombstoning take place. If you've got solder paste that's got poor tack qualities, we may find that during the placement, the component is not held in place sufficiently, possibly on one end. And this may be the reason why, even if we've got simultaneous reflow on both terminations, the part may lift. Anything underneath the component which can generate movement, so if we've got solder paste uh, due to slumping underneath the part, that capillary action may be the root cause why a component lifts during reflow, because there's energy underneath the part as the part moves into the reflow process and the wetting starts to occur on the terminations. Solder mask underneath the component can vary in thickness and if there are copper traces underneath the solder mask again that affects the thickness of the mask. So we get a seesaw effect which can occur and certainly I've seen this in manufacture. When you go below 0402 you really don't need solder mask between the terminations. You're probably less likely to actually have copper between those terminations of the pipe passive part. So again why have the solder mask there in the first place? You will generally find if you compare convection reflow with vapor phase or convection reflow in nitrogen, that with nitrogen and vapor phase, with a poor design, you are more likely to see tombstoning occurring on boards. So we've got to think of ways of significantly improving the process. One of the simple tricks that I've used many times with convection in nitrogen is reduce the nitrogen content. You're slowing down the wetting characteristics, you're saving money, but more importantly, in a short term, you're reducing the lifting of the part, which is the key issue. We've also seen solderability play a part. If we've got variations in solderability between each termination, even if every other aspect of the reflow process is perfect, you might, necessarily, you might see the component tends to wet to one termination quicker than another, hence that lifting occurring. Thank you very much for listening to Defect of the Month. Hopefully it's been useful and possibly you've found a solution to one of your process problems. So just a reminder that if you want to listen to more Defect of the Month, subscribe to our channel. If you just like this individual video, then please like it. And of course, share it with some of your colleagues in manufacture and in other companies. It all helps to bring information uh, to both production and engineering staff. If this 
short introduction to this particular problem was of interest to you, then of course we can hopefully provide you a solution to aid you eliminate more process defects within the future. Finally, if you've got a defect and you'd like it covered in a future Defect of the Month, then let us know. Thank you very much.